Hello everyone, my name is Richard Nash from Pearson Clinical Assessment. Uh, my role is the Customer Success Manager in the UK. Uh, just before we get started with this webinar looking at telepractice using QGlobal and QInteractive today, I wanted to wish you and your families uh, the best at this current time and we hope that you're staying happy, healthy and safe. And we do appreciate that these times make delivery of services to your clients and students more important than ever. And we do want to do our part to ensure you can continue to serve them during this period. So with that overriding thought, let's move on to the webinar today. So the webinar today is looking at the means of assessing via telepractice using our QGlobal and QInteractive platforms. Don't worry too much if you're not familiar with the term telepractice. This will be explained as we go along, along with our increased support options. So today what we'll cover is um, some considerations that you should be thinking about before you undertake any telepractice assessment. We'll have a closer look at the Q Global platform. Then I'll do a demonstration of remote on-screen administration using Q Global and also how to access some of the digital resources available on the platform. And then finally, I'll look at the Q Interactive platform as well and look at how that can potentially be used in a telepractice setting. So just some initial thoughts before we get going. Um, the webinar is very much intended to provide um, an overview of how to use both the Q platforms to administer assessments um, with your clients remotely. Um, as I'm sure you'll, you'll be aware, um, the current situation due to COVID-19 does pose many uh, changes and, and challenges to the traditional face-to-face -face mode of assessment. And we've certainly been um, inundated with queries from clinicians seeking alternative methods as to how they can continue to assess at the moment. Um, as I mentioned, we are here to support youth to make any changes necessary um, and through the coming slides, I'll talk through some of those. I will stress it's always important to consider the ethical, legal and clinical requirements uh, before administering any assessments via telepractice. And we do also recommend consulting with guidelines and requirements from your professional organisations uh, in addition to our own guidelines. OK, so what are we doing at the moment to try and assist you through this this time? So we recently made over 75 manuals and stimulus books accessible on QGlobal. Um, we've made them available as a free trial, so basically free of charge. Um, the intention behind this is so that you can continue working while the hard copies are locked away uh, in your practice or, or office or school. This access will remain available until at least the 30th of June 2020 and instructions on how to access the material will follow later in the webinar. Additional assessments will be added in the coming days, so please look at pearsonclinical.co.uk forward slash QGlobal for the full list and also stay tuned to that page for additional updates. To help you get started with QGlobal, we're now offering a free 20 minute onboarding session with our customer success team. So do look out for the booking details for your slot within your QGlobal welcome email when you sign up. We've also suspended digital product expirations between the 1st of April and 30th of June 2020. We know that many of you will be able to continue updating the licenses and subscriptions as usual, um, but for those of you that can't, please don't worry about losing access to either of those platforms, Q Interactive or Q Global. Renewals and new purchases can be addressed uh, after or on the 1st of July 2020, but you certainly won't lose access before that date. Um, Finally, we've also arranged for a 15 minute slot to be uh, made available and, and you can book a 15 minute slot with one of our assessment consultants um, and they're available to assist you with any questions you have regarding our assessments and their use via telepractice as well. Um, so do look out for a, a booking slot on the home page of our website um, where you can book your slot with one of our team. OK, so this slide is showing some of the free trial material, as mentioned in the previous slide, that we've now made available on Q Interactive. Um, there is specific guidance available for all of these assessments uh, and their use in telepractice on the individual product pages of our website, or you can look at pearsonclinical.co.uk forward slash telepractice 
further information. Additionally, on the Q Global page of our site, there's a matrix which shows further test availability on the platform, and there's also a PDF copy of this list for you to, to view as well. Uh, as I mentioned, accessed via that page, pearsonclinical.co.uk forward slash telepractice, we do have a, a specific telepractice guidance section on each product page. So these links not only summarise the above mentioned points, but also contain assessment specific considerations for that particular assessment and its use via telepractice. So let's move on now to consider some of the factors uh, for conducting a valid assessment in telepractice service uh, using the telepractice model. Um, those four considerations are currently outlined on the screen. Telepractice certainly does require an understanding of the interplay between a number of different issues. And in addition to the general information on our telepractice pages, examiners should also address these four factors when planning to administer and score assessments via telepractice. So now let's have a look at some of these factors in, in a little bit more detail. So first of all, looking at the, um, the impact and the settings for audio and visual environment and the equipment. So firstly, looking at computers and connectivity, you should have two computers with audio and video capability and most importantly, stable internet connectivity as well. You would require a web camera, a microphone, speakers and headphones uh, for both the examiner and the examinee's device. Regarding the teleconference platform, uh, tele any teleconference platform with screen sharing ability or capability is required to be able to conduct these assessments. Pearson don't make specific recommendations as to which platform you should use, and there are multiple platforms out there. And you may wish to consult with your professional body as to recommendations for the best platform to use. So regarding the video, um, make sure that you can see the full faces throughout the duration of the assessment. Um, we do recommend that you also use an HD um, quality recording. Um, and please make sure that, again, um, that's set up prior to the session. As I know, some platforms you can toggle between standard and HD. Um, so we do recommend you use HD. Um, the teleconference platform should allow all relevant visual stimuli to be fully visible to the examinee when providing instruction or completing items. The video of the examiner should not impede the examinee's view of the visual stimuli. Um, regarding screen sharing of digital components, you must always use the full screen or presentation mode for the digital comp components um, as viewed by the examinee. Um, this method provides the cleanest presentation of test content without on-screen distractions, for example, <coughs> excuse me, for example, extra toolbars along the top or down, down the side. Some further considerations uh, regarding the audio and visual environment. Um, so when items with visual stimuli are presented, the digital image of the stimuli on the examinee screen should be at least 9.7 inches as measured diagonally. Um, so 9.7 inches equates to a standard iPad or iPad Air size screen. However, other tablets can be used for Q Global for telepractice administration, provided they meet that guideline. Some teleconferencing platforms shrink the size of the images, um, so the facilitator should verify the image size prior to the testing session. Uh, typically, a computer screen used for teleconference assessments are a minimum of 15 inches measured diagonally. So that could be a laptop or, or a desktop screen. Uh, so smaller screens such as those of iPad minis and smartphones are not allowed for examinee facing content. Uh, these have not been examined empirically and may affect the stimulus presentation, the examinee response, and therefore the validity of the test results. Um, so moving on to gesturing, um, when gesturing to the stimulus books or response booklets is necessary, uh, display these assets on screen and point using the mouse. Um, you can show the paper copy of the stimulus book on your camera if needed and as appropriate. 
And finally, uh, just moving on to thinking about capturing responses using the response booklet. Um, when a response booklet is involved, um, immediate and accurate scoring can be achieved if the on-site facilitator holds up the response booklet and you capture a screenshot of each used page up upon completion of each subtest. Um, this also ensures that no responses are lost or altered prior to the scoring. Um, so just to touch on that a little bit more, um, the facilitator in the room would be able to hold up the response booklet and then you take the screenshot or the capture of each used page from your side looking at the, the screen sharing or the mirroring tool. Um, therefore, as it says on, as I previously said, um, no responses would therefore be lost um, in case of um, delays in sending the material back to you, yourself as a practitioner. So now thinking about some of the audio requirements, um, high quality audio capabilities are required during the administration. Um, an over, over the head two ear stereo headset with attached boom microphone is recommended for both the examiner and the examinee. Um, before you start, you should test the audio for both yourself and the examinee um, to ensure the audio equipment is set up and, and ready. Testing the audio may include an informal conversation prior to the administration where the examiner is listening for any clicks, pops or breaks in the audio signal and um, which may distort or interrupt the voice of the examinee. The examiner should also ask the examinee and facilitator if there are any interruptions or interruptions or distortions in the audio signal at their end. Um, in order to manage the audio visual distractions, so as with any testing session, um, whether it be on te telepractice or face to face, um, you should make sure the examinee's environment is free from audio and visual distractions including pop-ups or other windows on the computer. You should ask the examinee and facilitator to close all other applications on the computer, laptop or whichever device they're using, and also to silence alerts and notifications on the peripheral device. Um, that makes sure that the smooth, um, the test can run smoothly and ensures optimum uh, performance of the assessment. And finally, looking at lighting, um, so you should establish a good overhead and facial lighting for both the examiner and the examinee and also close blinds or shades to re reduce the glare of the sun um, on the faces and also on the computer screens as well. OK, uh, so now moving on to some of the factors affecting you as examiners. Firstly, looking at the practice. Um, so during the practice setup and um, before administering to any um, real or live examinee, um, you should practice the mechanics and workflow of every item in the entire test using and actually do that using the selected teleconference platform so that you're familiar with the administration procedures. For example, you could use a colleague as a practice examinee. Um, you should follow the standardised procedures and administration guidelines of traditional administration as much as possible. For example, if a spoken stimulus cannot be said more than once in traditional administration, uh, don't say it more than once in the telepractice administration either. And then the facilita facilitator role or training. Uh, so the on-site facilitator's role in a telepractice session is largely to manage the audiovisual needs and materials. You should train the facilitator to troubleshoot audiovisual needs that arise during the session, um, which could include things like the camera angle or the lighting, or maybe the, the, the checking of the audio as well. You should inform the facilitator to sit unobtrusively and silently out of the examinee's view when not actively engaging in their role as a facilitator. OK, looking at examinee factors now. Uh, so first of all, just looking and thinking about the appropriateness of the session. So as with any testing session, make sure that the examinee's environment is free from audio and visual distractions, um, including pop ups or other windows. You should ask the examinee and facilitator to close all applications on their computer or laptop and silence alerts and notifications on their device, as I mentioned earlier. Um, 
make sure that the examinee is, is prepared for the administration. So before initiating the actual administration, ensure, ensure that they are able, prepared, um, well rested and ready to do the assessment appropriately and to fully participate in the telepractice test session. The final step is to explain what the facilitator's role is um, so that the participate of the examinee is fully understood and their actions are understood by the examinee as well. OK, so there are a couple of other miscellaneous points here. Um, looking at copyright, first of all, um, so you should obtain permission to access copyrighted materials as appropriate. Um, you may not be aware, uh, hopefully you are by now, but you may not be, that Pearson has provided a letter of no objection to permit the use of copyrighted materials for telepractice use during the COVID-19 event. That letter of no objection is available from our website and you can download it from the pearsonclinical.co.uk forward slash telepractice pages. Um, in your reporting, moving on to post-assessment, you should state in the report that the test was administered via telepractice and briefly describe the method of telepractice used. Um, for example, as the sentence shows on the bottom there, um, you can use that sentence directly and, and copy and insert the test name as appropriate or uh, come up with your own variation of that. But as I mentioned, we do recommend you note that as I'm sure you would do anyway in your reporting and um, when it's complete. OK, uh, so now we've been through those considerations. I'm moving on to talk more specifically about Qglobal, first of all. Um, so for those of you that may not be aware of Qglobal, uh, it is a web based reporting system that also allows the administration of assessments that are either self administered or proctored. Um, for example, the Basque 3 and Vineland 3. Um, you can also generate scores and reports um, for other assessments, um, for example, the Cal 5 um, or the WISC 5 even. Um, traditionally, you would enter the scores from your paper record form into the platform and it would therefore allow you to generate a report. Um, with telepractice mode, um, there's additional steps you can do using Q Global, which I'll show you in a moment. Q Global already allows access to digital manuals and stimulus books on screen. Um, traditionally, again, they've been charged for as per a paper kit. Um, but as mentioned at the start of the webinar, we've now made these available free of charge for a period of three months initially uh, to allow you to hopefully continue working and assessing as needed. For certain assessments on Q Global, um, such as the BASC or the MMPI, there is also a remote on screen assessment option available whereby you can send the full test to your client via email and they would complete that on their own computer in their own time and the results saved back into your Q Global account ready for you to generate the report. And I'll show you how that works again in a, in a few moments time live on screen. Um, Q Global does include a resource library. So when you log in and click on the resource library, as it's highlighted on the screen there, you will see the relevant test materials that are available to you. For example, the, the Cal Verbal Stimuli, um, it, which is located in the general folder, uh, as you can see in the top red square. And then further down in the restricted folder, you would see your materials. Traditionally, if you uh, purchase these, they would just show, um, as is shown there, as the Cal 5 Digital Stimulus Book. But at the moment, you will also see the free trial option for each product um, is just noted with the word free trial before it. So for anyone that hasn't purchased these uh, items and resources already, you will automatically see those as soon as you have a Qglobal account. For those of you that have a Qglobal account already, you will see both options as is on the screen here, both the free trial version and the full paid for version. When you open up the resources on screen, um, it will look like this. Uh, this is another example from the Cal 5. Uh, this is the digital stimulus book. Um, the item just simply appears on screen and then you can click through the pages using the arrow, which is highlighted on the right hand side in the red box. Um, the stimulus then appears on screen. So for 
if you think that you're then using a screen sharing tool, uh, you would then simply show that that page and the examiner, sorry, the examinee would see exactly the pages that you're showing on your computer or tablet device in real time. Uh, so now I'm going to move into a live demonstration of the Q Global platform. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen and swap that over to the Q Global. OK, so this is the Q Global login page. And when I manage to log in, um, you will see a home screen which will contain your examiners and examinees. Uh, if you just bear with me a moment. OK, so now I've logged in with my test account. As I mentioned, you've got the examinee shown in the table underneath here. So these are all dummy ones. And at the top, you can see the resource library as highlighted on the previous slides. Um, to create a test session, um, the first thing you would do um, is create a new examinee if you haven't already. And simply by clicking on new examinee at the top there, it will take you to a box. Uh, a series of boxes where you'd enter the demographic information for the child or adult that you're wanting to assess. Um, I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to use a pre uh, pre thought or pre created test person. When you're ready to assign the assessment, you would put a tick in the box next to the red relevant person and click on assign new assessment here. And then going to click on my available list of assessments under all assessments and choose the Cal 5 UK. And then I'm going to assign that test to that child. So now you can see that we've got the name of the child, uh, we've got their age based on the date of birth we entered at the start, um, the administration date, which you can change, and you can select your ex yourself as the examiner or create yourself if you're not there already. Um, for this particular assessment to administer it in telepractice at this point, I would then save the record here. So you've got your kind of basic data and basic outline. However, the box is to include the scores are not yet populated. And this is obviously because we haven't actually completed the assessment yet. So what I would then do is go up to the resource library and as per all of the guidelines and notifications in the webinar to date, I would scroll down to my Cal 5, go to the restricted folder and open up the relevant documentation. Uh, for example, the stimulus book or the manual. Um, I would open that up ready to share using my screen sharing tool. I would have the record form with me um, so I can mark the assessment as I go um, using the stimulus uh, using the stimulus book to display to the examinee. And then at the end of the assessment, um, once you've gone through administering the relevant items and subtests in line with the guidance we've given, I would come back to my record in Q Global. I would click on the name of the child again. I would go to my test record. And then I can edit it and then input the scores in the scores tab for each of the, the uh, tests or subtests. Once I'd input the data for all of the scores, I would then be able to generate re my report directly from this page um, once I'd saved the record with the scores in. And the generate report icon will uh, would appear on the page there. I'm not going to attempt to do that now in the interest of time. Um, but for those of you that haven't yet got Q Global, as I mentioned, we do offer a free 20 minute uh, onboarding session with one of our customer success team and they will guide you through um, exactly how to generate that report once you've entered data. So uh, please do bear that in mind. Um, but hopefully get, that gives you a brief outline and idea of how the Q Global platform works um, and how um, 
relatively simple it is to generate your, your report once you've got data from your paper record form. Um, I mentioned at the start there is an alternative method of um, administ administering um, some of our other assessments on the platform, such as the MMPI or M MCMI4. Um, so I'll just show you the, the difference or the contrast between the CALF type assessments and those questionnaire type assessments. So I'm now going to choose my examinee to be this, this adult here, test adult. I'm going to assign a new assessment to them and I'm going to choose the MCMI4. So then I'll assign this one here. Again, it brings up the same screen. I've got the demographic information at the top. Um, I've got the status of the assessment lower down, uh, the administration date. Again, choose the examiner. But for this, shop, this assessment, I've also got additional options. So for the CALF, I would only have manual entry because I'd be entering the data manually from the paper record form, even though I'm administering via a telepractice setting. The difference with this kind of assessment is that you can also complete the assessment on screen on in the traditional world. You'd be in your office or practice with the client face to face and you would do it on your own machine. Um, but now we've introduced this third option, which is the, re the remote on screen administration method. Um, when you choose that option, it will send out the email to the examinee containing a link to the assessment and they would complete that. Um, in their own time on their own computer, as I mentioned at the start. Um, please do refer to the guidelines on the MCMI page um, or the relevant product page around the, the kind of theory and um, guidance behind that, because this is a new feature that wasn't available prior to the COVID-19 um, situation. Um, if you were going to administer it remotely, you would enter the examinee's name here again if it was different. Um, you'd also put their email address in in this box and you'd also be able to enter your own email address here um, so that you were notified when it was completed. Um, so then you would be able to just go back into your platform and pick up the pick up the scores. Um, if they were doing it remotely, um, as well as the demographic information being completed, you would also see in the item entry box the answers that were given. So that would either show as uh, one or two um, for true and false. I'll just show you that quickly. Uh, I can't because I've chosen remote on screen, but it, um, when you click the show item text box, it will show um, one equals true and two equals false basically. So you would see that all completed in these boxes. And then you would again have the ability to click the generate report button on your screen um, and produce your report output directly from the platform. OK, uh, so hopefully that gives you a brief kind of overview of how the Q Global platform works. Um, as mentioned, there are plenty of support materials available um, as well as our customer success team. We also have a, a quick start guide for Q Global um, that uh, guide you through the basics of how to set up an assessment and how to set up clients. And again, you would see that in your welcome email um, wh when you sign up to the platform. OK, so now I'm going to go back to my presentation. So if you just bear with me a moment. OK. So. Let's now move on to looking at Q Interactive. Um, so the Q Interactive platform is built around two um, using two iPads as the administration method of our assessments. Um, so tests such as the Cal 5, the WISC 5 or Wyatt 3. Um, using the two iPads, our Q Interactive Assess app is downloaded. Um, traditionally with one of the iPads with you as a practitioner um, and you would control the administration with all the relevant administrative tools on your screen. Um, those iPads, um, the second iPad is displayed in front of the client. Um, they connect via Bluetooth technology um, and the, uh, you can choose to display the, the stimulus visually 
um, on the second iPad and record the answers on your iPad as a practitioner. The assessments available on Q-Interactive at the moment in the UK are listed on the screen there, so I'll just leave that up for a moment. Um, Q-Interactive is um, something that can be used in a telepractice setting. Um, and there are some con extra considerations around the platform, um, which I'll go into on the next couple of slides. Um, so thinking about how you can screen share an iPad screen onto um, either your computer, or your PC or your Mac, and um, there are a number of steps you'd have to go through, which I'll talk through now. Uh, so let's start with the Mac first. So screen sharing from an iPad to a Mac actually only requires the charging cable. And uh, the first thing you would do is connect your iPad to the Mac using that, that charging cable. And um, the next thing you would do is open the QuickTime Media Player application on your Mac computer. And then from the file menu, you would select new movie recording. Um, once you've done that, you would then select the iPad from the drop down um, on the control panel. Once you're done, um, the iPad would then display on your Mac screen um, and making sure you went into full screen mode, you would then be able to begin sharing that screen for the testing session with the examinee. So screen sharing an iPad to a PC um, requires some additional software and there are several different products available now that, that facilitate that kind of screen sharing. Um, we do recommend you check the hardware and software requirements on those respective um, product pages or, or sites. Um, Pearson are in no way affiliated with any of the companies shown on screen, and there are more products out there than the ones listed on the screen. So it might be worth checking around to see what else um, is available for you as well. Um, one thing that all of these products have in common on screen is the ability to let you mirror the iPad screen onto your PC directly. Um, the mirroring software is fairly inexpensive and available for instant download. Um, and we do recommend you check the hardware and software requirements of your machine to ensure full compatibility. OK, um, so that takes us towards the end of the webinar now. Um, just to mention, as I noted um, at the start, we do have a range of support options available for you. Um, if you would like to contact your local Pearson representative, um, we do have a chat option, a live chat option now available on our page. Um, as you can see on this uh, screenshot here, in the bottom right hand corner, we have a chat with sales box. Um, when that's lit up um, in blue, you can click on it and open a chat with one of our consultants um, and ask them for any guidance or support you may need. Um, and additionally, on the product pages, you can book a 15 minute demo um, or chat with our consultants who can help you in a little bit more depth. Um, so please do, do look out on our site and our pages for the, the chat box and also the book a 15 minute slot with a consultant as well. So um, that does bring us to the end of this recorded webinar. I do hope you found it useful. Um, Please don't hesitate to contact me as well um, directly via my email address on the screen um, should you have any questions about anything I've raised in this webinar um, or just for clarification around what Pearson are currently doing and the extra developments we might be working on. Um, finally, again, I would stress that it is important to learn more about the uh, ethical, legal and clinical requirements before administering any of the assessments I've mentioned today in the modes I've talked about. And Again, check with your professional organisation prior to commencing any administrations. So that's everything. Um, I wish you a good uh, next few weeks in light of the current situation. And please don't hesitate to contact me in the meantime, should you require any additional support. Thank you very much. <laughs>